good evening everyone uh, we are in the week 9 problem solving session of the nptel course basic electrical circuits and week 9 is about first order circuits so let me share my screen i hope you are able to see my screen can anyone please confirm yes sir okay so today uh, we are going to discuss about uh, the first order circuits as you know first order means the order of the circuit is one so either it has uh, one uh, inductor not one inductor either it could be uh, inductor or capacitor along with resistors so first we'll start with the first order circuits i'll uh, deal with rc circuit and i'll uh, discuss about the generalized solution for rc circuit and i'll discuss about the uh, methodology and then we'll solve more problems uh, this topic is also uh, like uh the concept is not much to be discussed but you need a lot of practice so you have to solve a uh, lot of problems so uh, i'll try to uh, wrap everything up in uh, 10 to 15 minutes i'll just quickly solve everything i mean uh, the concept uh, i'll cover in 10 to 15 minutes then we'll solve the problems in the rest of the time okay so uh, we are st starting with first order circuits so i'll consider first order rc circuit or I can say first order circuits. And for example, I am considering an RC circuit. It could be RL also. The concept is applicable, but uh, we are considering an RC circuit. So first, I will just uh, give some brief uh, intro about uh, what is the generalized solution for an RC circuit. So let us consider the circuit something like this. So we have resistor here. And here we have capacitor and here we have uh, voltage source DC maybe I'll also show that so it's a DC voltage source that I'm considering so let the values be Vs which is the DC voltage source R and C and we are trying to find Vc of T so initially you can say that uh, voltage source is not connected at T equals to 0 this is connected and let us assume that uh, Vc of 0 is Vc of 0 only, not uh, 0 or so, so that we will get the generalized expression. So first of all, I know that IC, so let the current be IC. I hope everyone is following and able to see my screen. Let me know if there is some issue. And I hope I am audible also properly. Can anyone please confirm? We know that IC is equals to C into D. Yes, okay. And IC is also flowing through resistor. So I can write it as Vs minus Vc by R. Okay. So let us uh, change this and uh, rewrite in this way. I'll bring all dVc by dt in uh, one side and Vs on the other side. So we'll get dVc by dt plus 1 by... I am skipping steps because it is just some mathematical manipulation and I hope you will be able to do. So I have just uh, directly modified and I have written the expression. So this is the first order expression that we are getting. So this is called first order differential equation. So this is called first order differential equation that we are getting for RC circuit. For uh, RL circuit, it will be slightly different, but uh, things will be more or less same. So now using one experiment, we'll generalize the solution. So it can be applied for any first order circuit. It need not be RC, it could be network of resistor and capacitor, but still we would uh, be able to apply that same concept. So first for generalizing, we have started with a simple circuit, which is an RC circuit. So in, or in order to solve this, first we have to solve this, right? In order to get the generalized solution. So in order to solve this, I'm not sure whether you are aware of uh, how to solve first order differential equations. Basically, we multiply. We multiply by e to the power t by rc on both sides. So on uh, both LHS side as well as RHS side, we have to multiply by e to the power t by rc and uh, so now the expression will become something like this e to the power t by rc into 
PVC by DT plus e to the power T by RC into 1 by RC into VC is equals to VS by RC into e to the power T by RC. Okay. So the, I have just multiplied. So now it can be written something like this. D by DT of e to the power T by RC into VC. You can check uh, by applying uh, differentiation of UV. It will be U into DV by DT plus V into DU by DT so that you will get the same expression. So basically, whatever we have here, we are writing it in this expression. You can cross check uh, if you are not sure, but you will get that expression. So Vs by RC into e to the power T by RC. Okay. Now what I will do is I will bring the DT on the RHS side. So now I will get something like this. D of e to the power T by RC into VC is equals to Vs by RC into e to the power T by RC into dt. Now I will apply the integration on both sides from 0 to time t here also from 0 to time t. So now if you integrate and apply the limits I will get integration of dx is what x. So I will get e to the power t by rc into vc and what are the limits? Limits are 0 time t equals to 0 to t equals to time t okay now this is equals to what is the integration of this it will be vs by rc into e to the power t by rc by 1 by rc again uh, what are the limits t equals to 0 to t equals to t now if you see rc and 1 by rc gets cancelled so now if i apply the limits i will get something like this at t equals to t, it will be e to the power t by rc into vc of t minus at t equals to 0, e to the power 0 is 1 and vc of 0 is vc of 0 which we have assumed at the beginning. And here if you apply uh, integration uh, limits, then we will get vs into e to the power t by rc minus vs into e to the power 0 which is 1, so minus vs. Now if I segregate the terms and calculate vc of t, so exponential terms you write uh, in one term, non-exponential terms you write uh, in the other term. So now we will get Vs plus Vc of 0 minus Vs. Again I am just skipping a few simplification terms. It is very simple math so I, I hope you will be able to do and uh, I also want you to give it a try. So we will get something like this so this is the solution okay so apart from the mathematical uh, like simplification do you have any uh, doubts or queries maybe you might not have uh, understood the like step by step uh, math but once you give it a try or you, even now you can do it you will get the same expression but uh, concept wise do you have any doubt until this point so basically I have considered one basic RC circuit and I have applied uh, the KVL and KCL. So current expression I have written in terms of uh, capacitor dynamics as well as resistor dynamics. Then I got the first order differential equation. Then I have done some mathematical uh, manipulation to get the VC of T. So until this point, uh, is, is it clear? Sir? Yes. Sir, here Vs is supply voltage is constant, right? Yes, yes. Supply voltage is constant and it is DC. What if the supply voltage is time varying? That will come in week 10. So this week we are not going to discuss that. Sir, if the supply voltage is zero, then the equation slightly looks, I mean, change, right? Yes. So if the supply voltage is zero, then it is very simple. You have to put Vs equals to 0. So Vc of t is Vc 0 into e to the power minus t by rc. So this is yes. applicable when Vs is dc, not uh, ac. But whenever Vs is dc, whether it be 0, whether it is positive, whether it is negative, this uh, still can be used. But for time varying inputs, we will discuss in the next week. Is, is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Now if you see uh, any capacitor circuit uh, as the time approaches infinity the capacitor will be fully charged 
So in this case, the capacitor will be charged to Vs, right? Because uh, I am con connecting one battery by means of some resistor to a capacitor. So the capacitor will get charged, charged, charged at t equals to infinity. Even if you substitute t equals to infinity, the second term vanishes and you will get Vc of infinity is Vs. So from this, I can write Vc of infinity equal to Vs, right? So this can be written. And the time constant tau is also defined as and the time constant tau is defined as Rc. So now if you substitute this in the above expression, we will get something like this. We will get how? We will get Vc of t is equals to Vc of infinite Vc of infinite plus Vc of 0 minus Vc of infinite e to the power minus t by tau. So this is now the generalized expression which can be used for any first order circuit. Here it is capacitor voltage but it is equally applicable to any other component like uh, capacitor current, inductor voltage, inductor current. So if it is inductor current, it will be IL of t equal to IL of infinity plus IL of 0 minus IL of infinity into e to the power minus t by tau. Whereas in RL circuit, uh, tau is L by R. Here it is RC. So this expression is valid for any other voltage, any other current in the circuit. But we have to find that particular voltage or current infinite value, that particular current or voltage uh, initial value and the time constant in that circuit. And we have to just substitute it here without solving this uh, differential equation. Of course, you can solve the differential equation and get it, but it is very lengthy and time consuming, which can be avoided. And you can simply get the expression easily by using this expression. So now if you see here, it has two terms. One is uh, the constant term and one is the exponential term. So the exponential term is decaying, right? Do you agree? Yes, sir. Yeah. So now uh, there are names. So this term is called steady state response because it is the steady state value. So at steady state Sorry. means when it reaches, this is the value that we will be getting. And this is called transient response. Yes, someone was saying something. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're saying something. Sir, why here we are using that Vs equals to Vc of infinity? Yeah, because uh, Vs, here Vc of infinity is Vs, right? So eventually as the time uh, moves to infinite, say if this circuit is run for infinite, Vs will appear across the capacitor. So Vc of infinity uh, is Vs. Similarly, if you do for IL, here you will get IL of infinite. So this is more generic. For this particular case, you are getting Vc, which is same as the supply voltage. But if it is a complicated circuit, here you will not get Vs. Here you will get capacitor infinite time voltage. So in order to generalize, we are considering infinite time capacitor voltage and zero time capacitor voltage, which is more generic. Because if I have multiple resistors and uh, capacitor at the output, what is the capacitor output voltage at infinite term? That term will be appearing here, not the supply voltage. In this case, it is supply voltage because the supply voltage is what will appear at infinite time. But in order to convert into, into a generic form, we have to use Vc of infinite and Vc of zero terms. So that's why uh, I have calculated what is Vc of infinite, which is Vs. So that's why I have substituted Vs with Vc of infinite. Okay, sir. Okay. And also, uh, this is steady state response and this is transient response. There, there are other names also. This is called forced response. Because the input is appearing over here, right? If the input is zero, then we will not get anything. And this is called natural response because this is happening because of the circuit. If the input is not there, then this term will come. So there are different names, but uh, that is not our primary concern. Uh, primary concern is to understand uh, what uh, these terms are and how to get these terms uh, like directly for, for any given circuit. So till now we have just understood that uh, Vc of infinite, Vc of zero uh, are like the voltage at the infinite time and the voltage at the zeroth time. We just have to use it 
and uh, first we will write this expression and then individually we will find vc of 0 vc of infinite and time t okay so now uh, this is for simple rc circuit now i can uh, use it for any other circuit right so first uh, let us uh, discuss regarding that uh, process and we'll follow the same process uh, for the rest of the session so uh, step response of any first order circuit or say i have i i am given one uh, first order circuit so how will i how will i solve for it so we'll uh, sir, define yes sir can i ask a question yes yes sir actually i mean sir vc of infinity here infinity is the time yes. i mean where infinity is time Yes, infinity is time because we are writing function as a uh, VC as a function of time, VC of T. So VC of zero means uh, VC at time uh, T equals to zero and VC of infinity is at time T equal to infinite, which means it has reached steady state. Okay, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So now we'll write uh, step by step. So for a, any given circuit, first we have to determine the time constant. Determine the time constant. So, how will I determine the time constant? If it is an RC circuit, we know that uh, it is R into C. But if it is not uh, any uh, direct or uh, looking at the circuit, you cannot say because there are multiple resistors involved. Then what you will uh, you will do? Simple. You will set all the sources to zero. Okay, then find RTH across across C or L. Then we will get uh, time constant tau is R theven into C or L by R. Right? So we are basically finding the theven uh, resistance across those elements. And from there, uh, we'll be getting whether, uh, and for finding RTH, we basically set the sources to zero, right? So we are basically setting the sources to zero and finding the R in across C, if it is C, across L, if it is L. And then time constant is defined as R in into C, or uh, time constant is defined as L by R. So that's how we are uh, getting. I is it clear? So basically here I can write it as R in. Then you determine the initial condition, which means uh, what is the value at zero? What is VC zero? What is IL zero? So I can write a VC zero, IL zero, or it could be any other case also. So we have to find out what is the initial condition so that we can directly plug in this plug into this expression so after determining the initial condition uh, you can remember one thing so at uh, okay that i'll uh, tell later so after determining the initial condition now we have to determine the final condition which is at t equals to infinite so it could be VC of infinite or it could be IL of infinite. So now after this, use the generalized solution expression. Use the generalized solution expression. Which means it can be used for VC. It can be used for IL also. So let us uh, write it again. VC of T is vc of infinite plus vc of zero minus vc of infinite into exponential exp of minus t by tau so tau is again generic it could be rc circuit it could be uh, rl circuit as well. this is for uh, capacitor voltage now if i have to do il of t then it will be also same only instead of capacitor voltage we have inductor current IL of 0 minus 
il of infinite exp minus t by tau okay uh, and one more thing initial uh, so i'll write it something like this at t equals to 0 and at t equals to infinite and we have capacitor and we have inductor so basically uh, we are finding the initial condition and final condition right so we have to we should also know whether uh, how the capacitor is behaving at t equals to zero how the inductor is behaving at t equals to zero so at t equals to zero capacitor uh, behaves like short circuit at t equal to infinity it will be fully charged so it will be open circuit and at uh, t equals to zero capacitor will be like open circuit and at t equals to infinity it will get shorted so it works like a short circuit right so uh, these are uh, what we can use to find the initial and final final conditions so we will uh, plug in uh, capacitor to be short to find uh, the capacitor voltage or any other value that we want say capacitor current and similarly we'll uh, open it at t equals to infinity to find the capacitor final condition similarly for inductor uh, if you want to find the inductor current at t equals to infinity we'll short it and find it similarly at uh, open condition if you want i mean at t equals to zero if you want anything you can use it but usually this has to be this will be either given or you will have to find out so this will either be given or it needs to be calculated sometimes they give sometimes they don't give whereas this needs to be calculated always they will not give okay so uh, that's all uh, about the concept behind solving the problems the concept is simple and straightforward but uh, we need to solve more number of problems uh, to be more confident and uh, to also learn how to apply the concept that we have learned so i'll just summarize what we have discussed today the first order circuits uh, i have considered simple rc circuit and then i have applied kvl in the loop and i have converted everything in terms of vc so we got first order differential equation then by integrating it on both sides and by applying the limits from zero to t i got a solution now i have converted it into generalized form which can be used for any first order circuit it could be any voltage any current but uh, it will be just replaced by that voltage current uh, value at t equals to zero and t equal to infinity and tau is the time constant if it is rc circuit it is rc if it is uh, rl circuit it will be l by r so for calculating uh, tau we need to find the thevenin uh, resistance across that uh, c or l so first we'll set the sources to zero uh, just like how we have done for thevenin circuits and then we'll use it to find uh, tau for uh, rc circuit or rl circuit then we'll determine the initial condition then we'll determine the final condition then we'll use the generalized solution expression that we have just discussed whether it could be bc whether it could be il it will it is still applicable it is generic and we'll also have to find the initial condition and final condition and uh, these are the things uh, like uh, capacitor will be open at t equal to infinity inductor will be short at t equal to infinity using this we can easily find out the uh, final uh, values capacitor final voltage and inductor current final value and we can use it and we can plug in this to get the time expression of vc or il so t equals to zero means initial condition yes so this is the initial condition and this is the final value A any doubts till this point No doubt, sir. Okay. So then in that case, we'll solve more problems. And I also request you to solve by yourself. These are very tricky problems and uh, you need a lot of uh, experience in doing math. So I request you to solve the problems 
maybe even today when i am solving you solve with me so in this question uh, they are asking they have given a circuit and they are asking what is the value of tau so any anyone how to find tau in this question actually l by r yes l by r so let us do it so this is our problem one the first problem is simple and straightforward so for calculating r thevenin uh, you can short circuit the voltage source and the resistor across the l is r but in this case it is very straightforward because they are already connected in series so there is no need to find the thevenin equivalent can someone calculate and tell me what is the value that is coming you should always do calculations to improve your math uh, you should do more and more calculations so that you make mistakes and you rectify yourself it's not that uh, no one makes mistake everyone makes mistakes mathematical mistakes but we should do more and more math and then we'll feel confident and it will be like a practice so math will always come with practice so math should always be improved by doing more and more practice there is no other way so someone told tau is l by r directly so l is 100 micro henry and tau unit is seconds so henry by resistance is seconds so they want it in micro second they have mentioned in in the question i have not uh, brought it here so it will be 100 by 125 micro seconds so it is how much can anyone tell me Yes, zero point eight microsecond. Yes, tau is zero point eight microsecond. So this is the tau that we are supposed to calculate. So let us go and check. So it is in between point seven and point nine. So it is correct. Uh, everyone understood this problem. This is very simple and straightforward. But as we move on to uh, more, uh, like. problems it will get more and more complicated and more and more conceptual so that's why i want to solve more problems i'll try to cover as many models as possible i may not get time to solve all the 10 problems but i'll try to cover uh, many models so that you will feel confident about uh, the concept that we are learn learning okay if you don't have any queries then uh, we'll solve this circuit so here uh, it is again inductor or both are same so which one you want to solve uh, problem 2 or problem 3 both are same model so i'll solve uh, one of them so you tell me which one you want to solve both are same one they have given current in another case they have given voltage whichever question get the more words i'll go with that usually i do this so that question two question two question two okay then we'll solve question two okay so in the question two they have given current as the input and again uh, there is one rl network and they are asking what is the power dissipated so i know uh, power dissipation is what uh, i square into r right inductor current square into i mean the resistor current square into r so they have given is of t to be initially 5 milli and then uh, it is given zero meaning the current source is not there so now inductor current will uh, start uh, dissipating initially it will be carrying some current and uh, now it inductor current uh, will slowly dissipates through the resistor and it will finally reach zero but they are asking what is the power dissipated in the resistor at t equal to two microseconds so first we need to understand how we'll proceed with this so every time the method remains the same so you can follow these guidelines maybe i'll just copy paste and we'll use it so that you can correlate always whenever you solve the problem i am making it small Okay, I'm keeping it here.
So first we will have to determine the time constant. So what is the value of time constant in this question? Anyone? Hello? 1.25 1.25 uh, yeah. yeah so tau is l by r l is 10 milli by 8 kilo so it is 10 by 8 which means 5 by 4 which is 1.25 yes you are right so 1.25 microsecond so first i have calculated tau so let me first i have calculated tau and i have told you sometimes they give initial conditions some sometimes they don't right so Two is already given because they have mentioned that inductor current is inductor current is five milliamperes. So I have IL zero minus is five milliampere. Okay, so second part is done. Now we have to find out what is the final condition. So at t equals to zero, inductor current, I mean the source is there. After t equals to zero, the source is removed. So I'll write the circuit. I'll draw the circuit. So, this is the circuit after t equals to 0. So, after t, t greater than 0, this is the circuit and this is L, this is R. So, from this, can anyone tell me what is IL of infinite? So, at t equals to infinite, how we will proceed? At t equals to infinite, inductor will be short-circuited. So, now determine the inductor current. Zero. Zero, right? T tends to infinite, L is shorted. So we have got IL of infinite is zero. I hope everyone agrees. Everyone agrees? Any doubts? No, sir. Uh, Fagim, do you have doubt? So at T equals to infinity, I have mentioned that inductor will be short circuit. So what happens? This is the oral circuit, right? After t greater than zero, current is not applied. So the inductor, if I connect it to short, so basically the resistor is short circuited and voltage is zero. So the current is also zero. So that's why IL at infinite is zero because we are uh, determining step by step so that I can use the generalized expression. Now I'll use the generalized solution expression. So IL, now I'll write IL of t. IL of T is equals to IL of infinite plus IL of zero minus IL of infinite times e to the power minus T by tau. So now I have all the expressions. I will substitute it to get the final expression. So IL of T, IL of infinite is zero. So basically this term is zero and this term is also zero. So it will be IL of zero which is 5 milli which is 5 milli ampere into e to the power minus t by tau so tau is 1.2 seconds so minus t by 1.2 micro so this is my il of t now Someone has mentioned, sir, equation is correct. Which equation? Uh, Roshan, which equation? Sir, this equation, uh, this current equation. Yes. Uh, this multiplication is, is there, I think. IL of infinite plus IL of zero minus IL of infinite into e to the power minus t by tau. Okay, okay. So I have used the same expression. Correct. Now I yes, have sir. substituted all the things that I want. So now if you see, Say I have assumed this as IL. The current is, say IR, I have assumed this. Basically, current is entering the resistor. So I know that IL equal to minus IR, right? Or you can consider any direction. Since they have asked power, I square R is positive. So it doesn't matter. Else they would have uh, mentioned the direction. But in this question, I am considering IL and IR to be entering both the devices. So IL is minus R, IR. So now I have to calculate IR 
at t equals to whatever they have mentioned two micro so i r at two micro is equals to minus i l of t so minus five milliamperes times e to the power minus two by one point two so can anyone calculate and tell me what will be this value In the meantime, I'll so write the source current. Sorry, yes, the source current is uh, zero at yes. t equals to infinity. But how? how no, 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 at t equals to zero. At t equals quality. to zero. In the, at t equals to zero only source current is zero. So after t greater than zero, this is the circuit. The waveform that is shown in the red color. Yes. Uh, it is showing that at t equals to zero, we have five milliampere, but. Uh, beyond that, uh, yes. more t equals to zero plus or something, yes. the current is zero in the circuit. Yes. So how so can we have uh, power dissipation? So this is this yes. current so, is zero, but at t equals to zero, inductor current is five milliampere. So at t equals to zero, this car this inductor is having five milliampere, and this needs to get dissipated. So that's why I L of zero is five milli, and I L of infinity is zero. Okay. Okay. Yes, I got it. Okay. There is less than a minute. Uh, if this meeting ends, kindly join back. Sir, IL at infinity zero means L is open circuit, not short circuit. No, no, Fagim. Uh, usually at T equals to infinite, inductor will act like a short circuit. But in this circuit, current happens to be zero. Right? It does not mean current will be always zero in the inductor. Usually, when there is an inductor at T equals to infinite, current uh, inductor will act like a short circuit. Here it is acting like a short circuit and the current happens to be zero. So no current is flowing, but it does not mean that inductor is open. Inductor is always shorted at t equal to infinite. So that's why in this question, the current happens to be zero, but it does not mean that uh, current will always be zero, but the inductor is acting like a short and on top of it, current is zero. Did you get this? Pagi? Okay. So, uh, can anyone calculate and tell me what will be the uh, IR? So, PR will be IR square times resistor value, which is uh, how much they have given 8K. Can anyone quickly calculate and tell me these values? What is IR and what is PR? Sir, IR equals to minus 0.94. Something minus zero point nine four milli and PR anyone how much is PR? So you can calculate, you'll get around eight point. One five million. Now you just check your calculation, you will get around 8.15. I have done this. So 5 into e to the power minus uh, 2 by 1.2 whole square into 8k. It, it comes around around 8.15. When I have calculated, it is coming around 8.15. But I am not sure about IR. I have directly calculated PR by substituting this expression. So can anyone please confirm? Uh, whether you are getting the same values or not. Anyone? Uh, 7.066. Fagim is saying around 7.066. Uh, first check whether IR is coming to be correct or wrong. Then we will check. Hello, can anyone check whether IR is correct or wrong? Maybe IR calculation, there might be calculation mistake. I don't have a calculator with me now, so you have to check. So can anyone check whether IR is coming to be correct or wrong? Five milli into e to the power minus 2 by 
anyone can you check ir what is the value of ir Sir, minus twenty two point six something we are getting. how much how much minus twenty two point six. what ir value No sir. Ah yes sir, ir value. In milli or uh, I I think you made a mistake. Yeah, Five into eighty. only sir. Milli Uh huh. only sir. Sorry. In milli only sir. Milli. In milli only How can sir. it be twenty two? Because uh, we are multiplying with e inverse, so it will be less than five, right? How can it be twenty two? Point nine five. So someone saying point nine five. Sir, it's a minus zero point nine four steel. Okay, so it is zero point nine four. Then you multiply and check this uh, value. It is coming around eight point one five to me. They have asked that t equals to two microsecond. Right? T equal to two microsecond. I square r into r. Okay, check and uh, see. You substitute this here, and you will get around eight point one five. I have calculated and seen and checked with the solution as well. So it was uh, coming between eight point one and eight point three. So eight point one five. It's seven point two two. Roshan Bosh is saying seven point two two. I'm not sure whether uh, is it is it the case with everyone? How much you are getting? Seven point something. Yes, Sorry, sir. sir. It's zero point nine four, sir. Minus Sorry. zero point nine four. Minus Minus zero point nine four on the correct sir. Okay, and then. IR is correct, sir. Okay, and then multiplying with eight K, you are getting eight point one five. Not not eight point one five. Sir, getting something seven point zero six, sir. Seven point zero six. Because when I have calculated, I was getting eight point one five. I am not sure. You are you are sure that you have used exponentially e to the power minus two by one point two, right? Yes, sir. I am not sure about this value, but I have checked this value. So you kindly check whether you are making any mistake or not. So it will be Sir, IR is correct, sir. I am saying power, power, power. Power. It is coming seven point IR two. is correct. Yes, sir. Seven point zero six. No, because when I have calculated using this expression, I got something around eight point one five, and it is matching. So, I am not sure whether you you are you have done square and multiplied by eight k, right? We are calculating the dispersion Yes, in sir. this. Yes, sir. Okay, check it. I'll uh, also check again because I don't have calculator with me right now. I have to use uh, later. I I'll just check and I'll update uh, in the comment section. But I have when I calculated it come it came around eight point one five. So you please check again whether you are making any mistake or not. But this is the oral procedure uh, that you need to follow. Yeah, someone was uh, saying something. That if there will be a capacitor, then VC of infinity will what? So in this case, if uh, current is initially some value, and if capacitor is there here and resistor is there here, capacitor will be open circuit at t equal to infinite. So when this is open circuit, the capacitor voltage is basically how much zero because there is no voltage across the resistor. So V C infinite will also be zero. Okay, sir. Okay, yeah. So now uh, we'll move on to uh, another problem. Yeah. So question two and three are uh, basically more or less same. Now we'll move to question number four or inductor. We have done this is also something similar only. So maybe we can uh, solve question number five, which is interesting. So we'll solve question number five. So this will be our third question. Okay. So uh, just read the question. So they're saying uh, Vs is uh, 4 volt initially, 0. 
then they have shifted to four volt at t equals to zero. Now uh, both the capacitors have zero charge on them at t equals to zero. So after t equals to zero plus, we have to find out what is the capacitor uh, initial voltage, and then we have to find out uh, what is the value of V naught. So, so everyone has gone through the question. This is somewhat tricky question that uh, we have to uh, be a little bit careful. Has everyone gone through the question? Yes, sir. Last question. Uh, your uh, result is correct. It is eight point one five. Current was one point double zero five. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So one point double zero five, right? So everyone, please check here. You have made some mistake because when I have checked, it was coming to be eight point one five. So kindly check. Uh, don't do these mistakes, okay? Because these are very crucial. You you will directly get zero if you make any. Mistake. I have not done this. I have directly substituted it here. So I got 8.15. Yes, it is correct. Yeah. So uh, you please check that and uh, it should match. So now in this question, uh, so have you understood what we are supposed to find here and what exactly we, we have to do? Anyone? Uh, yes, sir. It is correct. Yes. Yeah. So basically, if you see in this question, uh, first of all, let me go back and take the, our, no, uh, I'll take it from here. So we'll use the same steps and we'll use the same step by step we'll do. Okay. Sir, initial voltage of C is zero. So at T equals to zero minus capacitor voltage is zero. At T equals to zero plus what is the capacitor voltage that we have to check. And that's where the tricky part is. So first of all, uh, let us find the time constant before going to initial condition. So how to find the time constant? R Thevenin. R Thevenin. So I'll have to set the supply voltage zero. So two capacitors will be in parallel and two resistors will be in series. So 5K, 5K, 10K and 1 nanofarad, 1 nanofarad, 2.5 ohm. Someone is mentioning 2.5 ohm. No, no, you just check. So the circuit will be something like this. Uh, so we'll have 5 kilo ohm, 5 kilo ohm, 1 nanofarad, 1 nanofarad. So now if I simplify it, I'll get something like this. So two capacitors in parallel means I have to add the capacitance. So it is 2 nanofarad and the two resistors are in series means 10 kilo ohm. So from this I'll get tau equal to how much? RC. 20 micro, right? 20 micro second. Yeah. 20 micro second. So this is my tau. So first we have calculated tau. So let us, one is done. So now the initial condition is the uh, bit problem, problematic, I would say. Because if you see, initially when supply voltage is zero, there will not be any current flowing through the resistors, right? So voltage, uh, current through this is zero, current through this is zero. Sir, uh, we look from V0 side, uh, R in parallel. No, no, it is uh, not about uh, any two terminals. We'll just short circuit the voltages and then we'll see how much is uh, the equivalent circuit uh, and equivalent R and equivalent C. We are not checking at any two terminals. We are basically, shorting this and then simplifying that circuit 
and then we are seeing uh, it is coming as 10 kilo ohm and 2 nanofarad so that's why tau is 20 microsecond i have not said at any two terminals we will be measuring that we will not do we will just uh, simplify the circuit uh, after removing the source so that's what we have done so now if you see initially when this is zero there will not be any effect of this capacitor uh, i mean uh, this resistor and this resistor because at t equals to zero there is no source voltage this is shorted and the capacitors are all discharged and the voltage here and voltage here is also zero now when we are giving vs equals to four volt what happens so let me draw the circuit and let us see so now we are checking the initial condition So this is an exceptional case of capacitors in series with the source voltage. I'll tell you where the issue comes from. So we have one resistor here, one capacitor here another resistor here and supply voltage this is also another capacitor okay so now here they have given this is 5 kilo 5 kilo 5 kilo 1 nanofarad 1 nanofarad and this is 4 volt so now i have considered the case of t equals to just 0 plus so what happens is, if you see, this is uh, Vc, so I will call it C1, I will call this C2, Vc1 of 0 plus and Vc2 of 0 plus. Okay, so whenever there are capacitors connected in series with the source voltage, right, just after connecting the power supply, the resistors will not come into picture because initially, the current flowing through them is zero so for calculating the vc of zero plus if you see where is the issue coming from vc one of zero plus plus vc two of zero plus is equals to four volt right so this is what my equation is saying so vc one and vc two are not zero so what happens is whenever the capacitors are connected in series with the source voltage the issue is capacitors will get instantly charged which means VC, there will be a step. IC is equals to C dVC by DT. So current will be impulse. So this is a uh, special condition where capacitors are connected in series because the KVL has to satisfy. So the capacitor voltages are not zero. So they will get instantly charged. So both the capacitors, capacitors, will get instantly charged right and uh, so for calculating the initial condition because these two are instantly charged resistors will not come into the picture so we can uh, consider this circuit and calculate vc1 and vc2 so now i can uh, calculate vc2 which comes on c1 by C1 plus C2 into 4 volt. So it is 2 volt. So uh, basically we are solving this type of circuit. There are two capacitors and there is one supply voltage C1, C2, 4 volt. So capacitors connected in series. So the voltage across one capacitor depends upon the uh, value of the other capacitance. So VC2 is 2 volt. Similarly, if you calculate VC1 and uh, to be precise, this is VC2 0 plus, VC1 0 plus, VC2 0 plus because this is just after. Because it is directly connected to the supply, the capacitors will see a step just after connecting because uh, they are directly connected to the source and the KVL has to be valid. So they will get instantly charged. Practically, it is not possible. We are uh, talking everything in theoretical. Practically, it will take some time. Of course, there will be surge in the current. And you cannot directly do that also. So, 2 volt. 
so is this part clear to everyone what i was uh, trying to say here is because the capacitors are directly connected with the source whenever the source is connected and at t equals to 0 plus we have seen by applying kvl vc1 of 0 plus and vc2 of 0 plus is 4 volts so capacitors will get instantly charged so in this case uh, there will not be resistor dynamics so for calculating vc1 0 plus and vc2 0 plus we have considered that uh, capacitor and the supply voltage circuit and these are getting instantly charged so just after connecting the voltage source both capacitors will get fully charged to already 2 volts and 2 volts just after connecting so this is the initial condition whereas if there is only one capacitor and one resistor then vc1 will be zero but because here it's a special case where they are connected in series with the source voltage it has to get instantly charged to satisfy kvl and here in this case current will be impulse because there is step function in the capacitor voltage so i will be c into dvc by dt so inductor cur uh, capacitor current will be impulse is, is this clear or do you have any doubts Sir. hello Sir, if there will be a single capacitor and single resistor then yes. what happen uh, so if the supply is connected to single resistor and single capacitor in that case capacitor voltage if it is initially zero it will uh, remain initially at zero after that it will slowly get charged said uh, in that particular case we will if, if we will consider that initial value when we will calculate the initial value then we will if we will that I, I mean that uh, the resistor will not be shown in initial case and the final case, the capacitor will not be shown. Yes. Yes, you are right. Is that your query? Hello? Sauna? Yes, sir. Yeah. So in the initial condition, yes, sir. resistor dynamics are not coming into picture because capacitor will get instantly charged. So we are just considering the capacitors and we are calculating the initial condition of the capacitor. At final condition or at t equals to infinity, capacitors will be open. So the capacitors will not come into the picture that we are going to do now. So just now we have uh, done the initial condition. So initial condition is initial condition is done. So someone was asking, uh, sir, what will be uh, the voltage for any C1 and C2? No, uh, for any C1 and C2, this will not uh, hold good. C1 and C2 has to be equal so that that's why it is 2 volt and 2 volt. Had it been any other value, then uh, they will deviate according to the values of C1 and C2. Because in this case, C1 and C2 are same, they are uh, distributed equally. So now this is the initial condition. So final condition, what will happen? Both the capacitors will be open circuited. So let us see the final condition. So after... After uh, removing or disconnecting the resistors, let us see how the circuit will look like. So this is one terminal, this is other terminal and here there is another capacitor. I will try to uh, assume uh, this is plus minus for C1 and uh, so maybe I will call it VC1 instead of C1 minus vc1 plus minus vc2 and this is 4 volt this is 5 kilo ohm this is 5 kilo ohm so can anyone first of all uh, tell me will there any current flow in the circuit and i am free to consider ground so i will consider this as ground anyone so there was there is an open circuit Yes. So no flow. current will flow. So now, will uh, flow. yes. So now let me show which are at the same potential. So I am showing the, so this terminal current will not flow. So this entire thing will remain at same potential, which is at four volts. So basically what I'm trying to say is this orange color, everything is in four volts. Now, if I change the color, this is it. 0 volt. Agree? 
Yes, sir. Yeah. So now can someone tell me what is the value of VC1? So basically this is VC1 infinite and VC2 infinite. So what is VC1 infinite? What is VC2 infinite? Sir, you told, uh, okay, someone has asked, sir, you told we find R thevenin during time constant calculation, but how to calculate R thevenin without any terminal to consider for looking from open uh, load terminal. So basically, Roshan, uh, here there are multiple capacitors. So uh, we are not actually uh, finding across any two terminals, or you can say that I am finding across these two terminals. Here they are asking V not to be found across these two terminals, but that does not mean that we are finding the R thevenin across these two terminals. So you can consider these two are the terminals. So this is one terminal, this is one terminal, because when this gets shorted, there will be one final net capacitance coming across these two. So across this capacitor, I am calculating what is RTH. Because this is a first order circuit, eventually, after simplifying the circuit, you will get only one capacitor. You will not get two capacitors because this is a first order circuit. And in this week, whatever circuit they'll give, even if they give two or three capacitors, once you short circuit the voltage and open the current sources, all the capacitors will either come in series or parallel. So across those two terminals, you will see a single capacitor. So across this single capacitor, I am finding the RTH. VC1 equals to VC2 equals to two volts final for C1 equal to C2. Fagim, are you sure? What is VC1? What is VC2? Can anyone tell me? Sir, VC1? actually during RTH finding, uh, yes. we always consider one, one terminal, load terminal to be open. And yes. then we look from that terminal. Yes. So, so, uh, but here in this case, uh, it's a little confusing we, from which terminal we should look into. So you can say that uh, we are looking at this terminal across the capacitor. So basically, whenever we are, we are finding uh, Thevenin equivalent, say, I want to find the Thevenin equivalent and I want the overall circuit to be something like this, RTH and capacitor. So I want something to be RTH and capacitor capacitor so now the tau becomes rth times capacitor so whenever i find rth i will always consider the terminals across c maybe i'll use a different color so i'll always consider the rth across the capacitor terminal so that's why you can consider these two terminals uh, to be the capacitor and across this you are finding the rth but in this case these two terminals are across both the capacitors so what we can do is Instead, you can find the RTH across both the capacitors. So we are basically finding the RTH across both the capacitors and these two capacitors combine to be two nanofarads. So across these both the capacitors, I am finding what is the RTH. Okay, sir. Okay. Now got it. Yes. Okay. Pagim, uh, you are still uh, wrong. What is VC1 infinite? What is, what are, uh, what is this terminal, positive terminal uh, voltage and what is the negative terminal voltage? VC1 infinite and VC2 infinite. Yes, 4 volts. Yeah. So VC1 uh, infinite will be 4 minus 4. So it is 0. And VC2 infinite plus is at 4 volt minus is at 0 volt. So this is also 4 volt. Right? Uh, is everyone uh, clear about this? These are all at the same potential. So VC1 will be basically 0 and VC2 infinite will be basically 4. Agree? Hello. Sir, sir yeah. in final case, sir, in final case, mm -hmm. we will consider in we will consider the resistor. So but here we will why we will consider the capacitor of infinite. Uh, sorry, sorry. Can you please? Sir, uh, uh, yes, sir. Sir, in the final case, we will consider the resistor. I mean, five kilo ohm and five kilo ohm. But here, the VC, VC one and VC two. Why we will taking that the infinite? Yes. So uh, as I have mentioned, whenever there is a capacitor circuit at steady state, capacitor will be fully charged and it will act like an open circuit. 
so i'll consider capacitor to be open and i'll find the terminals voltages of those uh, two terminals and then i'll find the vc voltage because whenever the capacitor reached steady state it means it has reached steady state and uh, it remain it acts as an open circuit because no current flows through the capacitor at steady state so it acts like an open circuit so i have considered the steady state uh, condition of the capacitors both have reached steady state and no current is flowing so i have considered this to be open this to be open now for this scenario what is the voltages uh, across this capacitor across this capacitor so that is what we are finding so final condition means capacitor acts like a capacitor act like open circuit because we know that capacitors act like open circuit we are using that to find the capacitor voltage at t equal to infinite is that clear sir if in the final condition we will take that v r1 of infinity and v r2 of infinite then if there will be wrong v r1 to be infinite meaning this resistor i mean sir yes sir how can you consider phi k to be infinite sir vc1 and vc2 why we will uh, i mean there will be open circuit so why will there i mean 5 kilo ohm and 5 kilo ohm both are in final condition we will take then what happen let us see first of all when the circuit reaches steady state it means capacitor has reached some value and it will not draw any current which means capacitor will act like an open circuit but resistor will remain as a resistor right this is the condition of the capacitor yes, at final condition so at final condition capacitor acts like open circuit because the current drawn by it is zero because i equals to c dvc by dt right voltage will not change at final condition so current drawn by it is zero so basically i is equals to c dv by dt because voltage is constant current is zero means the capacitor does will not draw any current so which is what uh, our circuit says so this current this current is zero and this current is zero so this is steady state of the capacitors at this uh, condition you have to find the capacitor voltage so i have considered capacitors to be open but at steady state resistor will act like a resistor whether it carries any current or not that we have to calculate but in this circuit given circuit there is no path for the current to flow so that's why there is no current through the resistor but it does not mean that uh, resistors will not carry any current in this circuit it happens to be like that but it does not mean the same clear okay sir thank you yeah so now uh, i got initial condition i got final condition for both of them right vc1 i got vc2 i got so i'll write the generalized solution for both these expressions right so let me write it here vc1 of t is equals to vc1 infinite plus vc1 zero minus vc1 infinite into exponential minus t by tau so if you substitute what you will be getting vc1 of infinite is zero so it will be vc1 of zero which is 2 volt so we will get 2 into exponential minus t by tau we got 20 micro okay now we will calculate vc2 of t vc2 of t is vc2 of infinite plus vc2 of 0 minus vc2 of infinite into exponential term of minus t by tau vc2 of infinite is how much 4 so you will get something like this 4 plus 2 minus 4 because this is 2 and infinite is 4 so we will get 4 minus 2 e exponential minus t by 20 micro so we have just substituted the values nothing much we have just substituted the values is is it clear hello yes sir so now i'll again uh, go back to the question so they are asking v not t so now i'll write v not t in terms of uh, vc1 and vc2 so i know that plus minus this is vc1 right sorry this is vc2 
and this is VC1. So now this voltage let it be VR. Can I write VR is equals to 5K by 5K plus 5K into VC1 which means VC1 by 2. Can I write this? Yes sir. Yeah. So now my V0 becomes VC1 by 2 plus VC two. Agree? This is my overall final solution. Agree? V not. Yes, sir. So now uh, I have VC one. I have VC two. So let me write this. VC one and VC two are obtained like this. So now I will write the final expression for V not. So, V0 is V0 of T is equals to VC1 by 2. So, it will be EXP minus T by 20 micro plus VC2 which is 4 minus 2 EXP minus T by 20 micro. So, eventually we will get something like this. V0 T is equals to 4 minus EXP minus t by 20 micro. So, this is the overall expression of V naught t. Now, you have to see at what value they are asking. In the question, they are asking at t, t equal to 10 micro. So, V naught at t equals to 10 micro is 4 minus exp minus 0 0.5. So, I will just write the expression directly. If you calculate, you will be getting something like this. V naught at t equals to 10 micro is 3.39. You can check and see whether you are getting the same or not. So, this is the tricky part of this question, which is only the initial condition. Final condition is simple and straightforward. Rest of the circuit is also simple and straightforward. Sir, we can find Vr by I into R or it will be complicated due to integration. Yes, uh, actually here we can find I into R, but uh, for calculating that current I, again you have to find uh, the initial condition and do, but whereas from the capacitor point of view, it becomes simple. So that's why I have told uh, in terms of capacitor, because anyway, we are calculating this capacitor, this capacitor initial and final voltages. So I uh, have converted this voltage in terms of capacitor voltage and I have done, but you can uh, give it a try using the inductor. Uh, I mean the resistor current also that is also simple but as the question is already complicated I did not want to complicate it more so I have uh, said in a way where uh, you can easily understand it is and it is straightforward to understand but you can give it a try and check whether uh, you can do or not you should be able to do you just uh, check and give it a try okay sir yeah so this is a very complicated circuit so uh, problem so I'll again summarize what we have discussed. So in this circuit, uh, if you see it's a special case where capacitors are connected in series with the voltage. So what happens is when the voltage is connected, if you apply KVL, capacitor voltages are non-zero, which means the capacitors will get instantly charged. So this is the special case when capacitors are connected in series with the voltage source. So only in this case, capacitor initial value will see a jump. Okay. But uh, before that, uh, we want to find the time constant. So time constant, you have to find R Thevenin across the capacitor. So you can consider any capacitor, any uh, terminals of the capacitor. So I have considered the terminals, these two terminals across this capacitor. I am finding R Thevenin. And uh, these two capacitors can be combined to be uh, a single capacitor. So when you combine this as a single capacitor, find the R Thevenin across this single capacitor, which is 10 kilo ohm. So tau is 10 kilo ohm times 2 nanofarad, 20 microseconds. So this is the special case. I'm saying it again, where capacitors are connected in series with the source voltage. So the capacitor uh, voltage just after zero plus is non-zero. And in order to find that, we'll neglect the resistor uh, dynamics and we'll consider only the capacitor dynamics and we'll directly apply the formula, the voltage division formula. And because C1 and C2 are same, we'll get both the initial conditions to be 
2 volt and 2 volt the, uh, the voltage will be equally divided so this is uh, the tricky part for final condition you know capacitors will be open circuit so we have open circuited this and we have found the final uh, voltages of for both the capacitors then we have used the generalized formula to get this expression for capacitor 1 and the expression for capacitor 2 both we got uh, to be different because uh, their final values are not the same so then uh, we have uh, converted this uh, V0 in terms of uh, VC1 and uh, VC2. So I, I have initially found this uh, VR to be VC1 by 2. So V0 is VC1 by 2 plus VC2. So we have VC1, we have VC2. So I got the expression for V0 of T. Now they have asked what is the value of V0 at T equals to 10 micro. So that uh, we have substituted and we found out to be, uh, it, it is coming around 3.39. You can uh, check, it should match. It will come around 3.39. So any queries uh, till this moment, Anyone? Any inquiries? VC1 and VC2 in final condition, please explain, yes. So uh, VC1 and VC2, for calculating uh, capacitor voltage at final condition, you have to understand one thing which is capacitors will act like an open circuit. So first we'll open the capacitors, which is what I have done. I have opened both the capacitors. After that, I have found out what is VC1, what is VC2. So first opening the capacitors, then followed by calculating those voltages. So after opening this, I have realized that there, there is no path for the current to flow in the circuit. So current will remain zero. Now at this uh, condition or at this moment I have calculated what is VC1 it turns out to be zero because both the terminals are at the same potential 4 volts what is the value of VC2 it is 4 volts because one terminal is at 4 volt other terminal is at 0 volt so VC2 at infinity is 4 volts but it all uh, falls on to the one condition that capacitors act like open circuit and steady state you have to use that to find the capacitor voltages, else it is not steady state. Capacitors will be open at steady state. So you have to consider that calculated. If you are not considering capacitors to be open circuit, it means it has not reached steady state. Final condition means the system has reached steady state. Time is at infinite. So capacitors have reached the voltage and voltage is constant, which means the derivative of voltage, which is the current, remains zero. So we have to consider it to be open circuit. Similarly, for inductor, you have to consider the same. V is equals to LDI by DT. Current has reached steady state. Current is constant. So, voltage across the inductance is zero, which means current is short-circuited. I mean, inductor is short-circuited. Sir, how VC2 is equals to 4 in final? So, if you see the top terminal of the capacitor, it is at 4 volts. The bottom terminal of the capacitor is at 0 volts. So, that's why I have written 4 minus 0, 4 volts. If you see the orange colored area, it is at 4 volt potential. The blue colored area, it is at 0 potential. Okay. Yeah. So I am just hoping that my uh, system will not shut down again. Let us see. Okay, so uh, we have uh, done question number five. I think uh, question number six we can do. After that, maybe nine or ten we can do. Nine could be easy or we'll see if we can do ten. Ten is uh, very simple and straightforward. Maybe nine or ten or maybe eight. One of them we'll do. But let us, if time permits, but let us start with uh, question number six. So they are asking the time constant and the capacitor voltage. So there are two parts in this. First, they are asking time constant followed by the VC. I hope you are able to see my screen. So this becomes our question four for uh, today's session. Are you able to see my screen? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. So this uh, is our uh, question number four. Okay. So question number four. So in this question, if you see, they have given it as a two port network, right? This is just to confuse us and uh, make things complicated but if you see uh, z parameter they are uh, what is the relation for z parameter we already know 
the z parameter is the relation between v1 and v2 being the inputs and uh, this is z11 z12 z21 z22 right okay multiplied by i1 and i2 agree so first time uh, recalling the concept i have learnt during the z parameter two port parameter and uh, i will use the same here okay so i know that this is the polarity polarity should be again the same thing you should not mess up the polarities else your answer will be wrong so this is the z parameters so agree till this point do you agree or do you have any queries okay someone said in the comment section yes so i i'm going to use this only and i'm going to find out everything so if you see the capacitor is initially discharged so this is very important they have given the initial condition so in this case uh, let me highlight it so capacitor is initially discharged so that itself will give me vc of 0 plus is 0 so this is what i am going to use so initial condition is not needed initial condition is already given so i have to find out two things from the steps that we have earlier, earlier defined first i have to find out time constant second thing i have to find out vc of infinite so these two things are to be found then i will get the expression for vc of t for any given time t so now can someone tell me how we are finding the time constant we are making the sources zero right agree hello yes yeah so we have to make the source zero in this question also by making source zero what i am doing basically i am short circuiting the port one 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 dash port right so yes so if if I name this as uh, 1, 1 dash, 2, 2 dash. So what I am trying to find? I am trying to find basically. So this is there. This is also there. So what uh, I am going to do is I am basically shorting 1, 1 dash because voltage sources are to be uh, short circuited. And this is the Z parameter. Now I have to calculate the Thevenin resistance across these two. So this is 1, 1 dash. This is 2, 2 dash. So for calculating Thevenin resistance, what can I do? I can excite it with a voltage V test. And I will calculate I test. Right? Agree? And here V1 is 0. And this is I1. Agree? So I have to calculate V test by I test. Sir, I think for Z parameter, the supply, I think this Z parameter, the I mean, I mean I1 and I2 is the input. Okay. Uh, so that that will... is also that is also fine. Okay. In in a way, you are correct. So, yeah. So, it, it, okay. Good thing that you have pointed out. We will do with that only. So, my i test is the input and this is my plus minus v test yeah thanks for pointing it out is, is that okay now this is the circuit and this should be sorted for calculating rth agree hello yes sir yeah so now uh, i'll write the expression for uh, v1 and i1 so i know v1 is equals to z11 i1 plus z12 i2 and v2 is equals to z21 i1 plus z22 i2 right and v1 is 0 so i'll substitute that so this is 0 so this implies 0 equal to z11 i1 
and I2 is nothing but I test, right? So let me calculate the value of I1. I1 is minus Z12 by Z11 into I test. Agree? Agree? I have simply substituted sir, V1 to be zero. Yeah. Sir, why you are short circuiting the, I mean, short circuiting the input, it is just the jet parameter. So it will be the open circuit. I mean, input will be the current. So we will the open circuit and two ports. No. In this case, I am trying to find R Thevenin across these two ports, right? So for calculating R Thevenin, set the sources to be zero. So the sources uh, should be set zero so now because sources should be set to zero i am using this and then i have to calculate the thevenin resistance across these two terminals so what is the thevenin or what is the resistance across these two terminals when this is shorted so for that to find i am exciting it it with i test and i am thinking that this is the voltage v test so now in this case my R Thevenin, I'm sorry. So in this case, my R Thevenin is nothing but V test by I test, right? I am not finding the parameters. Whatever you have said, it is to find the parameters, but I am not finding the parameters. I am finding the resistance at this two terminals, two, two dash, when the port one, one dash is shorted. Agree? Okay, sir. So that's why I am shorting this. And in this case, I have to find V test by I test. So first I have converted I1 in terms of I test. Now I will substitute that in the other equation. So my V2 is V test is equals to Z21 into I1, which is minus Z12 by Z11 into I test plus Z22 into i2 is nothing but i test so now i will get rth so basically my r thevenin is v test by i test that implies r thevenin if you calculate you will get something like this z22 minus z12 z21 by z11 so this is the final expression of RTH. Any queries until this point? No. Clear for everyone? Yes, sir. Yeah. So now uh, I will substitute the values and I will calculate RTH. So first I have to calculate RTH, right? So Z22 is what? Z22 is 1K. So we have 1K minus Z21 times Z12, so 8K into minus 1K. So minus 8K into minus 1K by Z11. Z11 is 2K. So what is the value of RTH? Anyone? What is the value of RTH? Hello? Anyone? Five sir. Five k. Yeah. So RTH is five kilo ohm. Now what will be the tau? Because they have asked tau. Tau is equals to R seven in times C, right? And C they have given one nanofarad. So how much is tau? Five microns. Five micro. Five microsecond. So this is my tau. Okay. So let us go and check whether tau is matching or not. So time constant tau is five, and it is in within the range four point eight and five point two. Agree? Any questions yes, sir. Uh, in the first part?
any queries till this part okay no sir so now they are saying final value of vc is defined as vc and we have to find out what is the value of vc so i have told you when the capacitor has reached steady state it will be open circuit so when this is open circuit open circuited at that time we have to find what is the open circuit uh, voltage of that two port network so basically uh, the circuit remains something like this so this is the two port okay and it has two terminals outside and this is the input that is applied. So now the input is applied and it has reached steady state. So the input is given to be 5 volt and we are finding the final value means T tending to infinite. So that's why capacitor is open. So basically we are considering T tending to be infinite. Okay. And this is the Z parameter and this is 1 1 dash and this is 2 2 dash. Now I have to find this value plus minus V2, right? Current I2 is zero, right? In this case, true. Yes, sir. And I have to calculate V2. So first I'll again write the Z parameters. So V1 is equals to Z11 times I1 plus Z12 times I2 and V2 is equals to Z21 times I1 plus Z22 times I2. So now uh, using that I2 is equals to 0, this will become something like this V1 equal to Z11 times I1 and V2 is equals to Z21 times I1. So now if I divide this, I'll get V2 by V1 equals to z21 by z11 right so from this if i calculate i will get something like this i will get v2 is equals to z21 by z11 into v1 right agree when i2 is 0 this is the relation between v2 and v1 So now let us calculate the V2. V2 is nothing but Vc, right? So we are going to calculate the value of Vc. So Vc is V1. V1 is how much? V1 is given to be 5 volt. And we are doing Z21 by Z11. So Z21 is how much? Z21. Z21. Z21 is 8K and this is 2K. So 8 by 4. So how much is the value? Z21 by Z11, right? So how much is it? Z11, Z12, 8 by... Uh, yeah. How much is the value? So 20 volts. 20 volt. Yeah. So VC is 20 volt. Uh, I'm sorry. 8 by 4 or 2? 8 by 2, sorry. I uh, This is not 8 by... 4. This is 8 by 2. So that's why it is 20 volt. So my capacitor final val voltage value is 20 volt. Okay. So let us go and see. VC is 20 volt. Okay. Let me again just uh, quickly summarize uh, what is what. So in this question, they have given Z parameter one network we don't know what is there in the network but they have given the z parameter two port parameter so we know basically we know the uh, current input current and output current input voltage and output voltage relation so using that relation we will try to find whatever is asked in the question so they have asked initially tau what is tau tau is r thevenin into c how will we calculate r thevenin we have to set the voltages to be zero which means the input 1 1 dash will be shorted and what is the output uh, terminal thevenin resistance that is my rth so i have to find rth at the output terminal so i have excited it with the current and i am calculating the voltage at that point so uh, for this circuit i have written the input output uh, relation 
and I have substituted V1 equals to zero and I have calculated V test by I test, which is R thevenin. After substituting the values, I got R thevenin to be five kilo ohms. So I have substituted a five kilo ohms and then I got capacitor to be one uh, nanofarad, which is given. So tau is five microsecond. And that was matching. For calculating the final value, we have to consider open circuit at the capacitor, which means V2 uh, side or the two two dash port will be open, which means current will be zero. So I have substituted I2 equals to zero, and then I have calculated V2. Uh, I have first derived uh, V2 in terms of V1, and then I have substituted the values to get VC to be 20 volt. So is this part clear? So till now, I think we have discussed uh, four problems. We are going to discuss one more problem and we'll see how many, how which problem we can discuss. Any, any queries? No, no. Okay. So uh, we'll solve one simple problem uh, with the inductor. Determine the V1 at uh, two microsecond. So any, any idea how to solve this uh, problem? Set so set the all the sources zero set to find time constant. Yes. So we'll follow the same steps and rules. So let me just uh, copy paste so that. So uh, sometimes uh, sir discusses this. Uh, this sir has discussed and I have just summarized into these points. So sir discusses this because then you will correlate that uh, the theory that we have learned. It is just the same, right? And you can uh, solve any of these problems using, uh, uh, you know, uh, this theory that we have learned. So this is uh, which problem? This is, uh, I think, uh, before I have added. So let me, so this will be here. Yeah. Okay, so that page has to be removed now. Okay, that page I'll remove later. So can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. We can remove this. Yeah, so I have removed that page. Now we have seven. So the last problem was four. And now we are discussing problem number five. So this will be problem number five. So this is very simple and straightforward as uh, one of you have pointed out. So for calculating uh, tau, first we'll start with the time constant tau. We have to uh, remove all the sources. So. Inductor current, uh, the, the, the current capacity, sorry, the current source current will be open and we are finding RTH across the inductor. So simplify the resistance across the inductor and tell me what will be the RTH. So this is 1 milli Henry. This is 2 kilo ohm. So across this terminal and this terminal, you find the RTH. Can anyone tell me what is RTH? 3 by 4. Uh, sure, are you sure? Yes, sir. So 1k, 1k will be in series. Right? One. Yes, 1k, 1k will be in series, making it 2k, and 2k, 2k will be in parallel. So it will be 1 kilo ohm. Everyone agree? Yes, sir. Yeah. How, sir? So, uh, if you see, uh, whoever was asking, these two will be in series, making it 2K, and 2K, 2K will be in parallel, so it is 1K. So, this is 2K, and 2K, 2K is in parallel, so making it 1K. Right? So, now my tau is 1K into 1 milli, sorry, 1 milli by 1K, so it is 1 microsecond. Agree? Yeah, so I initially calculated tau and uh, it is very simple and straightforward and I got this. Now I have to find the initial condition. So they have given in the question itself, in, uh, inductor has 
zero initial condition. So initial condition is also done. I L of zero plus is zero. So let us write I L of zero plus is zero. Now I have to find the final value. Are you following? Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. So for final value, we know inductor will be short circuited, right? Agree? Yes. So if inductor is short circuited, the two kilo ohm will be short circuited, right? Agree? Also, if yes, inductor, inductor current is zero, V1 of zero plus will be what? V1 of zero plus will also be zero because there is no current flowing. V1 is this voltage. So I am considering that voltage at initial condition. That voltage is uh, uh, coming to be zero. Right, initially. Hello, are you there? Uh, so whoever is talking, your voice is breaking. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, we write uh, current equation in the inductive circuit. Here voltage is asked. Yeah. But if you see, it is uh, like here I have made a mistake. Here, here it will not be directly zero because just after zero plus, just after zero plus, inductor will not come into picture. Right. Okay. Let me draw so that it will be more clear. So uh, initially inductor current is zero. So IL is zero. So uh, we'll remove that. But if you see, there is resistor, right? As resistors are there, voltage will not be zero. Because inductor current is zero, it is given, I have removed it. But if you see, this is 5 milliampere, this is 1 kilo ohm, this is 1 kilo ohm, and this is 2 kilo ohm. And they are asking, and we are finding this voltage plus minus V1, right? So if you calculate V1, I am just uh, skipping the math uh, because uh, we are uh, coming to the end of our session. So if you calculate, you will get it will be minus 5 by 12 volt because it, will, it is in the opposite direction. So my V1 of 0 plus is minus 5 by 12 volt. Just after applying the current source, there will be voltage across this resistor. The inductor current is zero. That is a different thing. But we are directly finding this voltage, right? Because we will apply uh, all this generalized solution for V1 directly. So I am calculating V1 of zero plus, which is minus 5 by 12. Agree? Sir, for final uh, for final case, we will yes. be uh, short circuited the inductor and yes. the, and we will we will find out the current across current through the resistor, right? Yes, yes. But I am not doing the final value. I am doing for the initial condition. I am saying initial condition we have I L zero plus to be zero, so no no current is flowing through the inductor, so inductor we can uh, remove because no current is flowing, but if you see the rest of the circuit, V1 is not zero because uh, just after zero plus, so this is T equals to zero plus. T equals to zero plus. 
if you see just after t equal to 0 plus v1 will not be 0 because current is there and this current will flow through these resistors. If you do KCL, KVL, you will get V1 to be some finite value and it is minus 5 at all because current is flowing in the other direction and V1, this is given plus and this is given minus. Clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So now for, for calculating the final value, inductor will be shorted, which means this 2 kilo ohm will be shorted. So we'll have 1 kilo ohm and 1 kilo ohm left and this will be shorted. So let me draw the diagram. So inductor will be shorted. So here we have 1 kilo ohm and uh, here initially we had a resistor and this is also 1 kilo ohm and you are finding this terminal voltage. So basically these two terminals are shorted, which means there is no role of this resistor. This is 1 kilo ohm. This is 1 kilo ohm. This is plus minus V1 of infinite. This is 5 milliampere. So can you calculate and tell me quickly what is V1 infinite? Anyone? So we have two resistors in parallel and the voltage across it is uh, V1 and uh, load the polarity. 2.5. Uh, yes, you are right, but it will be minus 2.5 because the current is flowing in the other direction. So now if I write the generalized expression, I can write for any voltage and any current as I have mentioned. So V1 of T is equals to V1 of infinite plus V1 of zero minus V1 of infinite into exponential minus T by tau. So V1 of T is V1 of infinite, which is minus 2.5 plus minus 5 by 12 plus 2.5 exponential minus T by tau. So if you, uh, Calculate at t what value they have asked at t equals to 2 microsecond. So now I am directly writing the answer. So v1 at t equals to 2 microsecond. You can calculate it later. You will get around minus 2.21 volt. So I have not calculated the inductor current because they are asking voltage at uh, some other terminal. I have calculated that voltage directly and I have... Uh, uh, use the generalized expression for that voltage only. So let us go and uh, quickly check whether it is matching or not. Minus 2.21. So it is uh, in in this range because minus 2.21 is lesser than minus 2.2 and greater than minus 2.4 because these are negative numbers. Okay. So let me just uh, summarize this final problem. Here, if you see in this problem, they have asked voltage across this resistor. So we'll directly find the uh, voltage initial value at this and final value at this. But one thing you have to keep in mind, R thevenin will always find across the inductor because we are fi finding the voltage across this, that that, that uh, does not mean you have to find RTH across this. RTH will be found across the capacitor or inductor. So at these two terminals, we have to find RTH. So this will be open, 1K, 1K will be in series, which will be in parallel with 2K. So RTH is 1K, which means tau is one microsecond. So the method will not uh, change irrespective of which voltage or uh, which current you are trying to find out, the RTH will be carried out across the inductor or across the capacitor. So at T equals to zero plus inductor current, they have given initial zero condition. So uh, there are no current flows through that, so that I have removed. But in this scenario, V1 is not zero. V1 will be some value, which uh, if you calculate, you will get around minus five at one. Due to lack of time, I have skipped those calculations, but you can find out it is just a resistor divider circuit. And for final value, inductor will be short circuited. So this two kilo ohm will not come into picture. One K, one K will be in parallel, which is 0.5 kilo ohm multiplied by five milli minus 2.5 because the current is flowing in the other direction. So V1 will be minus 2.5. So now I have used this generalized expression and I have calculated the value V1 at T equal to two microsecond as asked in the question. And it turns out to be minus 2.21 volt. So uh, that's all uh, about this question. And uh, that's all about... Uh, 
today's session week 9 where we have discussed about first order circuits initially we have discussed the concept uh, regarding how to generalize the solution for any given circuit and we have discussed about the guidelines using the same guidelines we have solved different set of problems and uh, we tried to cover different models and we have seen how to solve that and i request you to solve these questions by yourself give it a try and uh, solve other problems and try to solve as many problems as possible so that you'll feel confident and you'll not make many mistakes see today you have made a mistake uh, in one question uh, but try to not make those mistakes in the final exam which will cost you marks yeah that's all about today if you have any queries then i'll address else uh, we can wind up this session any queries until this point hello are you there no sir okay so if you have uh, no more queries then uh, we can end this session here so that's all about uh, week nine first order uh, circuits uh, whether it could be rl or it could be rc or it could be a network of resistors and capacitors the guidelines will remain same you just have to follow that step by step and then uh, everything uh, will fall into place but uh, there is high tendency that you might make mistake try to solve problems so that uh, you will feel confident and uh, you will get the practice of the math then you will not make many mistakes in the final assignment and i wish you all the best for your week nine we'll meet again in the next week on monday 6 to 8 uh, to discuss the week nine problem a week 10 problems i'm sorry so i wish you all the best meet you in the next week thank you for joining thank you thank you sir thank you